Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, what I'm going to show you guys is how to repair some cracks in a color coat maintenance free finish. That's a mouthful, but that's what this is. It's like a brick. It's like this right here. You never have to paint it guys. And we do a lot of these color coats. And by the way, we came here a couple weeks ago and we were doing some work and I saw these cracks. <laughs> this job is going on a year now. Anyway, I saw these cracks right here and the homeowner said, Jay Kirk, we got a couple cracks here. I said, yeah, I suspected that because of the tampering that was done here. And he says, what do you mean tamping? I said, well, the tamping is um, what they do. They get a machine and what it's used for is to compress sand, dirt, concrete. It's, it's a big machine and it hits the, the ground. It vibrates it just and it weighs about 100 pounds anyway it tamps the ground down and what that does is it creates vibration vibration of stucco is like kryptonite to superman it just cracks it every single time it breaks it anyway i'm going to explain something guys all right this color here it's um crystal white la habra's crystal white la habra makes a lot of color coats and these are maintenance free color finishes again and the beauty of it is you never have to paint it no matter I mean, 100, 200 years they last. Okay, what happens? Well, let me show you this too right now because the owner asked me. He says, well, Kirk, we got some cracking around the bricks. I said, that's temp. The tamping did that. See, like right here, Jay, I don't know if you could zoom in, but we got a huge crack right here. And we were looking at that earlier. And he says, wow, that's cracked right here. And it went up here and, and it went up the side here. I said, well... You know it's a brand new crack if there's no dust, dirt, moss, or anything in it. And all the rest of the crack in here, it's typical. It's a 120-year-old house, but it's all typical. But the new one here, no dust, dirt, or moss. That's how you know it's a brand new crack. With tampering, with tamping actually, it's a big machine again. It vibrates the ground. And that creates it. So if you're going to do any of this kind of stone, this was six pallets, possibly two tons of pallet. They did that. They set it here. I tell folks often, do the roof. Put all the tile roof on it. Put the dead weight. But it didn't cross my mind. This is about the third time we've dealt with a guy coming in and doing tamping. And then we look at it and we get some hairline cracks. But anyway, they're easy to fix, guys. Now notice this crack here. This is a big crack. And we just did this uh, in December. Now we're in April, May, end of February, March, April. So this crack right here was only four months, but the, it was created because of this. Here's how you fix it anyhow. You take a water hose. Now you wet that. And notice, when you wet stucco, it darkens. When you wet bricks, look at that, it darkens. When you wet stones, it darkens. Why? Because it's maintenance free. You never have to paint these. You never have to do. In a hundred years, this should look just like this. The bricks are already 120 years old. But notice, you don't have to paint them. You don't have to do anything to them. Anyway, I learned this many years ago. Uh, working with Whitey, we were on a job. I think I was about, oh, 20. And we went out to a job. We were working in the city. We went out to a job and... Whitey's job was to stop and look at a job and t explain to the boss uh, why it was cracking. And he came out and he says, well, you guys use a jitterbug here. And I was thinking, what's a jitterbug, man? That song by George Michael came out, you do the jitterbug. And in my mind, I was thinking, what's he know about that song? But what he was talking about was a tamper. It's a, they call them a jitterbug them days, too. Anyhow, you wet this wall right here. This is wet and this is wet. So while this is wet, you just skim it. And you might say, well, that'll show through. At the end of the day here, and granted, uh, it's been a cold, wet winter. Uh, the last couple days have been record-breaking temperatures of the rain. So it's like 40 degrees here. It's, it's pretty bright. We got lucky today. Uh, but anyway, I'll show you this toward the end of the day and we'll look at it and see if in fact it did blend in. Now, a couple guys called me and said, Kirk, I'm going to do a color coat and we got a bunch of cracks. Uh, what's wrong? I said, nothing's wrong. You're supposed to have cracks in the brown coat. Uh, you put it on, it's that boring stuff of a pH level. The pH is 
high, like around 14, and then when it settles or dries and cures, it goes down to about an eight. That's, uh, it's just natural drying. Okay, right here, we're gonna get rid of this crack. Oh, I could do this. And remember guys, toward the end of the day here, I'll come back and it'll be dry and we'll show you how it works. What you can do on some of these color coats, like we're doing crystal white. Crystal white is very forgiving. It's one color that we know from experience that is easily blended in. Uh, all the rest of the colors are way more difficult. Uh, if this was, say, a base 200, which is a base gray, I couldn't do this. If it, but it is base 100, and base 100 is white, and it's crystal white, too. So this one color is the one we can get away with. And years ago, I guess like 30 years ago, I was doing something. The guy says, hey, Kirk, can you fix, touch this up? I said, if I touch that up when it dries, it, it's going to look horrible. And I did it anyway. It looked perfect. And that's how I found out about, I guess, 35 years ago that crystal white is the only color you can do. And then retouch it up. And when it dries, it'll come out the exact same color. All the rest of them on the La Habra chart, which is about 40, uh, you don't have that luxury. Anyway, I thought I'd point this out. And towards the end of the day, when all this is dry, we'll come back and we'll look at it and, and see if I'm correct in what I'm saying. It's end of the day, thank God. We finally finished this house. A year it took for doors and windows. Okay, that blended in because I knew it would. Dan had a question, and I thought, that's a good question. He said, Dad, what happens if you don't wet the wall and you apply just the mud? Here's what happens, guys. I would rather, you see, that's kind of bled. It's a different color. That's why you always have to wet the walls first. For me to fix this, it's five minutes, but I'd rather spend the five minutes and have anybody who's working with me do something so they can see their own result. That way it's locked in and they never forget it. My name is Kirk, Jason on the camera. We thank you guys for watching and as usual, we'll see you on the next one. All right, folks, we wanna thank you all for watching. If you enjoy the videos that we put out, please like and subscribe so that we can keep making these videos for everybody. And as always, from the, from the entire, entire Giordano family, family, we'll, we'll see, see you on the next one. one.